Okay, good evening. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start. Uh, if you want to uh, wait another several minutes, uh, I can wait. There's a, some stuff showing in this uh, waiting room. I think still people uh, entering to this. Uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me to do this lecture about prehistoric fauna. Uh, I think uh, most of you guys are familiar with this uh, topic, prehistoric fauna. Before before I start this lecture, I have to uh, inform you some uh, several uh, things. One thing is uh, there's a bad uh, rainy situation. It's a cat and dogs in this area. So there might be uh, some uh, occasions or several times that you, I have to uh, have, uh, I, I get a uh, bad connection with my, internet connection so that's uh, that's it's not uh, not within my approach it's because of the weather uh, the other thing is uh, you can uh, ask a question related to this uh, lecture uh, but i appreciate i would appreciate if you can do it after the after this lecture there will be a, a question or the discussion session so you can note down any question within this lecture then after that you can ask that uh, session okay uh, uh, prehistoric fauna this is the uh, topic that uh, that was given to me to conduct lecture which is a uh, not a uh, i'm not a fan for doing a prehistoric fauna as a lecture because uh, that's a vast or big uh, subject to discuss it's not a simple subject so i'll do my best to simplify and do as much as uh, discussion within this lecture anyway uh prehistoric fauna okay we can start uh first of all what is prehistory so uh, things that used to live in uh, like uh, from the past okay prehistoric means uh, like um, it's a prehistoric fauna means um animals that live uh, used to live long ago like that okay uh, it's a uh good answer not the best but a good answer because uh, i'm telling it's not the best because uh, prehistory means the time period prior to written records of history there is a history and prehistory in ancient age uh, as a human humans we was able to discover or the invent writing so before that time before the invention of writing all the time period we refer as a prehistory so for that uh, answer it must include period prior to the written records anyway it's a uh, very good answer and the uh, next one prehistoric fauna uh, that student also gave the answer for that uh, question as well yes in that time period prehistoric time period animal living during those time we refer as a prehistoric fauna and there's a prehistoric flora as well which means the plants uh, that live within that uh, prehistoric time period approximately uh, before uh, 3000 BC because the 3000 BC that we 
uh, think the written invention of the writing start so the before the 3000 bc we refer as a prehistory so prehistory goes for 3000 bc to the uh, beginning of the earth which means 4.5 billion years ago uh, and the prehistoric fauna the the topic that we are going to discuss today yes already at the answer animals lived during the prehistoric period we refer as a prehistoric fauna the the other thing is most prehistoric animals have never been seen by human because almost everyone are already extinct but there are some exceptional cases that we refer them as living fossils that uh, should be another topic but i will lightly uh, like the bilsher fish uh, the uh, and um, so the chicken is also a descendant of the t-rex yeah i know that's evolution i'm talking about the living fossils which is uh, the animals that the so uh, also the are living fossils yeah so, and there are lung fish so lung fish are also living fossils there mm -hmm. were nine types of lung fish and then uh, only three are alive now the other types have been extinct but three types of lung fish are still alive and then the australian lung fish kind of evolved to get flippers but then the south american lung fish and the south african and the uh, african lung fish uh, uh, both don't have flippers so they can't really swim properly yeah thank you for the your information so anyway this is the again i i try to get to my topic or the previous like fauna as i said before that those are the exceptional cases or the living fossil those animals still can be uh, seen or observed by as a human because they are still alive because they didn't extinct and the uh, descendant of the other prehistoric fauna which is we normally do, doesn't categorize as a prehistoric fauna because uh, because of the evolution we became another or the different species so uh, those are the current fauna almost other prehistoric animals or the fauna are uh, never been seen by humans or the current so dinosaurs like uh, so like because di we can't see dinosaurs or anything i beg your pardon so we can't see dino dinosaurs because like they went extinct like that no sir yeah but uh, how how we uh, we was able to uh, get to know about these creatures so oh, paleontology uh, we dis like we discover the animals by first searching their fossils yeah right that's the next slide that i'm going to go paleontology or the science or the logic it really the latin means of the science that uh, doing study is about prehistoric animals or the not not only the animals uh, prehistoric life forms so due to that paleontology we was able to know tons of or the millions of animals that lived in past history or the prehistory that's why i uh, tell in the beginning of this lecture this is not a uh, small subject it would be prefer if you able to get uh, like a lecture series or the, some uh, specific uh, families either the specific time periods it would be better anyway uh, due to the paleontology we was able to know there was a species or the life forms that lived uh prehistoric time period so those animals that we are going to talk today so before we uh, talk about them 
you should know about the gts or the geological time scale so it's like um, when an uh, animal dies um, after a time uh, like some sort of substrate covers it but after that it packs and packs and packs so uh, in the, like you can tell wh wh what time it is in uh, how far you dig uh what did you say so when an animal or like a agent animal dies um usually after a time its bones will uh, get covered by some sort of substrate no sir yeah yeah after a small like a long time it will get covered by substrate after that there's a new layer of uh, like land or land over that animal so like after that uh, some, uh, like there's more layers and layers and layers no sir so you can tell uh, what type of animal uh, like what time that animal used to live in uh, using the gts uh, uh, actually you are talking about the fossils that's why i said if you want to discuss something oh, yeah. about this subject you should wait until i finish oh, yeah, the, then you can uh, start your discussion hey, calendar for events in earth history so uh, for the uh, learning purpose or the observation purpose scientists made a time scale or the calendar to divide our earth history that's a gts so according to this gts there are some periods eons eras so on so far so we can learn about uh, our earth history according to those time scale this is the gts that we have now and see there's a pre cambrian that's a super eon then there are some eons hayden archean proterozoic pandrozoic like that then after that you can have the eras like paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic so then come for the periods like that so uh, these are the periods we should uh, look uh, look and uh, observe to get our prehistoric fauna or the animals most of the periods uh, are very well known for the humans or the current society because of the paleontology but some of them it's not it's a less known because of the animals that lived in those periods of times it's not uh, fascinating as the others comparatively others for the human mind so uh, as a first period or sorry the super eon pre cambrian i will go to the pre cambrian pre cambrian or the pre cambrian sometimes it's said cryptozoic this is the earliest part of earth history the problem is this uh, super eon mark 78 of the earth history if you divide earth history into a uh, eight part seven was covered in this pre cambrian time it was 4.5 billion years to 5 542 million years but it very uh, small stuff we know about this uh, time period and uh, it's uh, very uh, much less about the animals and the flora that lived in those periods or, or the pre cambrian super eon anyway in this pre cambrian super eon it is divided to three eons which is hayden archean and panerozoic sorry proterozoic hayden archean and proterozoic there are three eon in, includes that pre, pre cambrian super eon these are those periods or the eons proterozoic archean hayden hayden is the first eon of the earth history uh, it start from the start with the beginning of the earth uh, and nothing was uh, still 
cannot be found in hidden eon as a life form actually life was started about 3.4 billion years ago so hidden before that hidden eon came and go before that time so uh, nothing leaves hidden eon then the archean eon started archean eon is the first eon that we was able to uh, observe or the get some some of life form some primitive life form of earth history so the, those those are the so first like life bacteria and some worms uh, not worms uh, only bacteria and cyanobacteria most of them are single cell still yet to multicellular organism uh, to evolve but single cell organism start to evolve and uh, almost everyone is uh, prokaryotes so uh, then after that proterozoic eon started then the eukaryotes and the multicellular organism start to evolve in the end of the proterozoic there are some uh, we call that those uh, events are explosion it's not a uh, literal explosion like a volcanic eruption or something like that those also happen but these are we uh, refer as a explosion in the diversities so on the proterozoic end of the proterozoic eon there is a huge uh, explosion happens in the uh, living organism so creatures diverse vastly so in the life in archean in the archean eon you can see uh, nothing in still in there then nothing specific in still there but these are the first stuff that uh, start to live in our earth these are the thing that uh, start to evolve to us to now you can see there's a bacteria cyanobacteria these are the thing that lived in those days in the archean eon then we can go for the proterozoic which is uh, sir, sir, yes. sir uh, how do you uh... find those bacteria uh, like do they live in geodes or anything like in rocks or can no, you just find that cells of them no uh, there are several uh, fossils we call it uh, uh, what we call them is a uh, so like can't re- can't remember the uh, uh, name of those thing in the meantime if i remember those i will tell anyway you can uh, find those as a fossils not the literal uh, bone or something like that because these are single cells but you can uh, find uh, dna traces sometimes in rare condition you can find the uh, fossilized bacteria because still there are ways the soft tissues and the cells can be fossilized so those condition you will be able to find uh, bacterial and cyanobacterial uh, fossils and uh, uh, there are so when i was searching about um, bacteria uh, like agent bacteria um, they say one way to find this is in um, like geodes uh, like amethyst geodes um, yeah geodes, like rock geodes like sometimes yeah, ho- hollow rocks yeah They, that's the that's a, that's why i said there are some uh, several conditions that will uh, give chance to uh, fossilize this organism so uh, if you able to know to extract them and where to find them you will be able to find those uh traces mainly dna traces and uh, some uh, cells that fossilize in this area in the in the beginning of the paleontology uh, we didn't know anything about these things or the bacteria or cyanobacteria or anything like that we just speculate but uh, the development of the science now we able to see or the technology we able to get and they extract these uh, single cells organism and the soft tissue animal but it's not it's not a 
may it's not the uh things that we excavate uh, daily basis but yeah still we we will able to find them something like that that's another uh, topic it should be another lecture about fossils and fossilization then the life in the proterozoic or the third dion that uh, include inside the pre cambrian super eon this is uh, there are some uh, thing some um, animals that i put in this slide most of them it's uh, unrecognizable or the comparatively we can't say anything about a uh, special thing about these animal comparing uh, modern animals because most of them are weird looking why they are weird looking because this is the time uh, live start to find new new natures so uh, there are plenty of natures to explore before them there aren't anything in these natures mainly bacteria and cyanobacteria so they start to experiment new patterns new body figures so it's very weird looking uh, earth in that time you can see these are friends and willy biota or the edicarian biota we call the biota is some uh, fauna and flora or the life in some certain time we refer as a biota in that biota you can see some animals this is a carnia it's a animal actually but still it's debatable which is animal or plant or something like that but uh, most of the scientists believe this is animal the early early fauna then the dickinsonia same uh, thing like uh, carnia still uh, people is uh, debating whether this is a animal or plant or fungus or something like that they still don't have any uh, good idea about it but these are the stuff that lived in these uh, eon or the proterozoic most of the thing that lived in the water still uh, land is less percentage in our earth and the uh, other thing is land is still not uh, good for uh, thrive or the live for the animal or anything else so most of these thing happen in water in the proterozoic earth so uh, then we can go for the phanerozoic the phanerozoic is the current geological leo this is the time that uh, covering current uh, time scale in our which include us dinosaurs anything you can call life or prehistory or current uh, animals flora fauna everything included in this eon which is a uh, one of eight it's very small portion but all the stuff compact in this uh, eon phanerozoic so uh, this is this was started at uh, 542 million years ago and see these are the phanerozoic eon and there are uh, three major eras paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic this is the first era or the paleozoic there are several periods which is well known and the uh, done uh, good or the best job in their period for contribute life in the earth these are well familiar with you rather than archean no proterozoic or head or something like that you can uh, i think you are know about the cambrian ordovician silurian these are the well known periods and the some of the well known animals was found in these uh, periods these all include in the paleozoic era which is first era of the Pan panerozoic eon now we can go for the cambrian fauna this is the cambrian 
you uh, will know about these animals, trilobites or the animalacaris. If anyone can tell me about trilobites or the animalacaris, now your chance. Uh, yes, sir. sir uh, animalacaris was the, uh, in its time, it was the top predator of the seas, sir. Yeah, good. And. What about um, so trilobites are like uh, like uh, relatively like close to horseshoe crabs, but they can live out of water and in water, but they prefer to live in water. Yeah. Actually, the we... and sir, yeah, uh, yeah. both these animals lived uh, close to the seabed, sir. Yeah. Good. Um, all of the thing that you are saying. 100% right according to the studies that we done update tomorrow up to date tomorrow so uh, these things might be a change if you do more and more studies about these uh, animals but up to date those are the facts that we know about these things yes animal acaris is the first apex predator as for the history as for the paleontology this is the first apex predator and the first one came for top of the food chain after starting a predator and prey relationship. And this, is, this one is an arthropod. So, uh, and the trilobite, the first divers group uh, that covered almost every corner in the earth, including land and the water, but not all the land. Uh, shoreline or something like that. Sir, and the, uh, both yeah. of these animals used to live live to like live in the same time at one point, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. You can see, uh, animal car is it's a it's a temporal range is a five hundred thirty five to five hundred twenty, and the trilobite five hundred twenty one to two hundred and fifty two. So the five hundred and twenty to twenty one, there's a one million year uh, time that they they were lived together as a prey and predator. <laughs> Sir, so during that time, uh, animal acaris used to hunt down uh, trilobites. Yeah, that's the that's the main prey during that time. Because of that, uh, this guy or the animal acaris, we are talking about only animal acaris, but there are uh, several uh, species, including this uh, animal acaris in this family. There are several uh, species. Uh, divers and uh, evolved to hunt different trilobites and the trilobite also happened to uh, evolve some characters features to defend themselves so that that's the one thing that triggered the evolution predator prey relationship so uh, we can go for the next these are another uh, two of cambrian fauna one is Hikaya, the other one is Halusogenia. Can anyone say about uh, something these two? Actually, I can't hear. Anyone talking? If anyone know about the Halusogenia or the Pikaya, now your chance to tell. Who is these guys? What are they doing? So oh, anyway, uh, you can uh, find this uh, thing in internet also. Also, I, I will uh, tell uh, briefly about them. Pikaya is uh, one of the first vertebrate or the chordate, not the vertebrate, chordate, which is included us that uh, evolved in the sea. So basically, this is our ancestor, one of our ancestor, Pikaya. It has a chordate. It's, it's a chordate. Then the halosogenia, this guy is still mystery for the paleontology because first they uh, find fossil of this thing. They was uh, unsure, which is animal or plant. Then they was unsure. They was uh, looking at upper end or the bottom end of this guy. It's a very weird looking creature. 
So that's why they are named as this thing as a hallucinogenia. This is wandering mind. It's a always a very a hard thing to describe this thing. That's a, the thing. If you're doing going to do paleontology, that's one uh, thing that you should doubt come because you only get uh, if you able to get a full fossil or the whole creature. Uh, that, no, I that, can't hear properly. Sorry. Now. Now you uh, now you can hear. Okay. Yes, I can hear. Okay. Uh, if if you're doing paleontology in the future. Are you, if you able to find a fossil that include everything, if you find bone fossils that you can find every bone in that fossil or the eighty percent of bones, uh, you can consider yourself as a uh, uh, lucky guy because uh, getting something like that is very rare in the paleontology. Normally, you get uh, teeth. or the single bone or some trace like that so so that thing you should able to uh, create whole new creature not the new creature but exist creature you should create in some simple fragment so that's a uh, one uh, thing to outcome in paleontology but fortunately there are way and the methods that you can outcome that uh, boundary and uh, paleontologist doing that is very well otherwise we we won't able to find anything in these animal so when the hallucinogenia find that was very uh, hard to predict or the tell what is this it's a still it's not uh, quite sure what is this but that now they know that they are looking at uh animal in the first time they they didn't think they doesn't quite sure this is animal or plant or anything else anyway these are the cambrian fauna or the uh, first uh, period of our paleozoic uh, era then you will come to the ordovician fauna uh, there are three uh animals the creatures i've put in this uh slide so anyone is know about these animals you can tell there's a orthoceros there's a conodon there's agnatha um, excuse me sir yeah uh, sir orthoceros um, is a distant relative sir of uh, na squids squids yeah yeah good um anyone else okay so As... conodonts so conodonts are like a relation of an eel uh yeah it's a it's a looks like a eel but it's not a eel yes, it's, sir, a, it's a yeah. jawless fish yeah it's a small jawless fish yeah good so uh, orthoceros as uh, the i don't know the name of the student but right yes it's a distant relative of the squids it's a descendants we call them as a nautiloid you can still find the nautilus as a uh, creature that we call nautilus still living in the ocean which is a uh living fossil so, so, like uh, they have a curved shell right just like yeah. that but they have a curved shell yep so uh, it's quite similar to ammonite so in the shape they are quite uh, similar looking as ammonite but they are not ammonites but nautilus you can still find in our waters oceans so uh, this guy orthoceros or the orthocons are related 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 to that nautilus and the distant relative of the squid these are some mollusca in the ordovician uh, seas these are the top predators or the orthoceros or the orthocons then uh, first uh, jawless fish the echnathas start to uh, evolve in this period 
then the conodon uh, another jawless fish this guy is very a uh, uh, unique creature because of the abundance of its tooth people uh, there are uh, several methods that uh, timing or the telling time about the geological era one is if you find uh, abundance fossil you can tell the time period ah uh, this guy is living in this area so this should be the time this like that so uh, the conodon there are uh, tons of species or the tooth we found they used to uh, determine time for that uh, some uh, of the time period so that's why i put the conodon uh, they arrived or they appeared in the ordovician time then they uh, thrive into 200 point 201.3 i think it's a uh, triassic until triassic they was lived in our ocean someone okay uh, if anyone have any questions okay so uh, uh, sir uh, yeah. like so like do the look this um like they were eight pack predators so like uh, were they predators like that were dominant predators no uh, uh, uh the from what species are you asking orthoceras yes sir yeah the orthocons or the orthoceras the family include these animals but the was the apex in the ordovician fauna Uh, so what relative size were they there are several sizes uh, orthocon orthoceras uh, uh, can uh, there are uh, some animal was 5 uh, meters or 6 meters something like that there are huge animals and there are some small uh, puny animals also in this families but the relatively they are big mainly 5 meters 6 meters something like that if you go into something in feet 30 feet or something like that so uh, like how did they care about the like babies and stuff no uh, that's still in mystery but they speculate though the paleontologists speculate they uh, breed uh quite similar as the current uh, relatives or the descendants of they are doing thus they mate then they just disperse their eggs into the water or the ocean then uh, it will hatch in the ocean currents babies come as a small uh, microscopic organism then they will uh, grow as a individual so normally they doesn't have parental care uh, in these uh, families as for the current studies but if they found able to find anything new this this might be a change in the future but for now they think uh, they still uh, breed or they reproduce as their current descendants doing so and uh... is that agnatha uh, agnatha related to like uh, lampreys yeah agnatha is related to lampreys because the agnatha is the uh, another i can't remember it's a uh, order i think or the super order that belongs to the jawless fish lampreys and hagfish the yeah. all all the other fish jaw fish include uh into another super word i can it's a natostomata so uh, these are the first uh, fish looking or the fish animals that uh, start to arrive in the ordovician uh, era those are jawless fish these are agnatha the agnatha means literally means without jaw thank jawless. you there's a then the uh, other time period 
third time uh, period of the uh, Paleozoic era, Silurian. So Silurian is another uh, unique time. Again, uh, uh, unique time. Again, it's uh, most of the creatures uh, start to uh, roam in uh, water, but some of them, mainly first plants, uh, start to come to the land, and some of the uh, first arthropods also start started to come for the land so life in silurian is a uh, very uh, unique and there are some uh, different species uh, actually i put four of them so anyone can uh, know about these creatures again it's your time to tell who are who are these there's a acanthoides there's a pterygotus Anyone know about these creatures? So, uh, prairie goaters um, is a bottom dweller that feeds on um, things like uh, when a, an animal eats, they they can also hunt, but they prefer to eat you know, their bottom feeders. Yeah. And then the, these uh, are the, yeah, tell. Sir, and Acanthodus, sir, is a. Uh... Um, is a genus of spiny shark. Yeah, it's a it's a cartilage fish or the early sharks, the acanthodus, and then, yeah, like the other guy said, pterygotus. Pterygotus is a most of the time it's a bottom feeder, but it can hunt because this genus. These are sea scorpions, pterygotus. These are the top level predators and the uh, uh, dominant predators, some of them grew to size uh, twice the size of the man. So uh, these are the well-known uh, species in the life of Silurian. In the next uh, slide, you can see there's another two of uh, one is a sea scorpion, Eurypterus. The other one is Trachyoraspsips. That's a uh, the, type. The, yeah. E Europectrius um, is also a bottom dweller, just like the the one before. But um, the only difference is like the, they have that uh, spine, spiny, spine tail. Yeah. They also yeah. have some arms. Yeah, because they used to are, uh, like yeah. grab the prey with. Yeah. These are arthropod, mainly they categorize as a sea scorpion. This guy is a fish species, partially hardened fish. So they also start to uh, evolve or they arrive in this uh, period, Silurian. Then we can go for the Devonian fauna or the Devonian uh, time. There's a two of them that I quote. Sir, sir, I know about the Dunkelos here. Oh, tell sir, yeah. Dunkelos, this is an early fish. Um, it has a like a like a bony head, um, and it can it has a really big bite force. Um, it's a. It's also a predator of that type. Yeah. It's an armored fish. Yeah. In the Dunkleosteus, uh, unfortunately, uh, still these uh, species or that these families are already extinct. Uh, we was unable to find anything related to them in current fauna. These we call placoderms or the armored fish. Dunkleosteus is the largest one of the placoderm. In that time, in his time or in her time, it is the largest and biggest and the apex of the food chain. The other one is a. Uh, so, so like yeah. uh, even the Dunkleosteus bite force is like uh, very strong that can even ri rival the bite force of a T Rex. It's even stronger than a bite force of a T Rex, yeah. but weaker than a Megalodon. So like, yeah. Weaker than a megalodon because the megalodon has the strongest bite force ever. Yeah. Then the other one is the Stethacanthus. Yeah. Someone still talking? Okay. There's the uh, there's a 
Uh, shark like fish. That's actually uh, that's a shark. This one is I put because uh, this is a very unique shark. You know, all the shark in uh, current uh, oceans uh, have similar similar shape, similar looking features. But in the ancient time, there are several different looking shark. This guy called as iron boat shark. You can see its dorsal fin. It's uh, flattened. It's like an iron boat. This is a uh, Stethacanthus, ancient shark. Nowadays, the, uh, the, the flat fin. Uh, like, what is the purpose of it, sir? No, still, uh, it's debatable. What is the purpose of the this? But uh, scientists uh, think this is a SSC character, the secondary sexual character. Uh, so. Mm, Male's fin or the male dorsal fin uh, became large, so it can attract females for the reproduction. Uh, still, it's debatable. So I saw an article about them saying that uh, the bigger, like the bigger dorsal fin of the male, like attracts more females. So then, yeah. normally, then there was a theory that uh, that uh, dorsal fin. Uh, like the sharks have to kind of like make it better by eating like some like better food or something. I'm not so sure, but that's what they've said in that article. Uh, it's a theory. No. Yeah. In 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 the animals, if you are wasting your energy for unnecessarily big thing, if you uh, you can uh, see the current. Uh, Example as a peacock, when the breeding season, male has a huge uh, or the big, long, nice feather, feathery tail, which is unnecessarily unnecessary because uh, it's uh, very hard to maintain that thing, and the main males become a good target for any kind of predator. But if still he can manage. Still, he can spend his uh, energy for that thing, that tail, and still he can survive. The all the other female thing, uh, this is a good uh, genes to uh, send the or the give their offspring and uh, send to next generation. That's the happen in the sharks also, in the other animals as well. So uh, normal size. Or the normal uh, fin, it used for normally this dorsal fin is used for the maintain balance. But the iron board dorsal fin, it's it's a uh, can't be used as a maintaining balance because it's not the proper uh, dimension nor the proper design to do that. But still, they maintain that iron board uh, design. So scientists think. This is used as a secondary sexual character or the SSC. Then the Devonian era, there's another uh, several uh, animals I, I was put. These are two species. If anyone know about this, again, you can uh, share your knowledge. There's a Tiktaalik and the Acanthostega. Um, so, uh, the Acanthogesta is a... Um, uh. An early relative of reptiles. Uh, it's, a, it's a somewhat okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, both the Akantostega and the Ichthyostega, sir, were one, some of the first uh, animals to adapt to laying eggs on dry land. Correct. So, uh, Tiktaalik. Yeah, uh, Tiktaalik is one of the only, only, like one of the first animals to get a movable neck. And right, it correct. has fins, gills, and it also has lungs. Yeah, this is a type of uh, fish, Tiktaalik. Even its uh, name translates as a berbert. Berbert means uh, another fish, freshwater fish in the Inuit language. Anyway, this guy is the first, one of the first animals that can use is can move its neck the movable necky fish then the acanthostega one of the first creatures that uh, 
invade the land one of the first uh, invade sorry vertebrates invade the land so that these are the descendants these are ancestors of the uh, amphibians then the reptiles tend to us then there are another two things or the ichthyostega as like at the acanthostega sir the phylogenetic yeah. uh, phylogenetic is not extinct but is but uh, uh, like sir it's found no, sir like um, but uh, it's typically it's, it's, it's a living fossil sir so it's a living yeah. fossil yeah yeah, yeah and but it's considered as sir, a rare typically endangered but yes sir yeah. it's considered as a really rare fish in the west indian ocean right it's it, but indian it's not extinct it's discovered again so i know about that that's why uh, i put it it's in here But these creatures also started their uh, arrival in this uh, Devonian era. Silacanth is a very well-known lobfin fish. This lobfin fish shows that the fish that give rise the uh, tetrapods or the us. So that's why I put the seal account in here. There are several other lobfin fishes also in that area. Almost every one of them are similar looking. So it's uh, it's up to you to uh, find another one when you uh, try to do a peace time thing. Anyway, uh, this is the fish type of fish that give rise. uh four limbs or the tetrapod ancestor which is eventually become uh, everything in the tribe in land then there are another uh, two uh, yeah tell so uh, like is the not like the wolf fish and the uh, the vampire fish relatives of the silacans sir i beg your pardon uh is this uh, the wolf fish and the um, Uh, the uh, what do you call it um, vampire fish uh, relatives of the uh, like the silacan ah uh, that i can't recall wolf fish and vampire fish uh, fish is like a fish that looks exactly like the silacan and the vampire fish it kind of looks like a tarpon or something but uh, it has these two really long fangs it's Uh, also no yeah i'm not sure there is another name for it but uh, this those are the two fish the wolf fish actually real looks like a seal okay uh, but the problem but is but they are fresh water i think yeah, are you uh, telling about the sea wolf uh, oh you mean the wolf eel no sir uh, it's a fresh water both of them are fresh water uh-huh anyway the thing is the sea wolf or the wolf fish uh it's not a uh close relative of the uh, silacan but uh, i don't know uh, the other one are you talking about uh, fresh water wolf fish yes mm-hmm. sir fresh water so i can't recall about that and the other one as well no, like you... um There's also the brackish water wolf fish, no sir. And there's a wolf fish in the sea, or the sea wolf, which is has a, a pointy toe. That's why we call it wolf fish. And it's a it's a fish, another fish, not a not a closest relative to the sea lion. But the anyway in the time, if you uh, put in these creatures into the uh, evolutionary tree, we are relative one another in one point of the time according to that you can tell this the uh, all the fish are related to these guys otherwise i can't uh, actually recall the uh, the wolf fish or i was talking about the fresh water wolf fish uh, you can find those things anyway the other guys i was put is one is a hylonomus the other one is a diplocolus so the hylonomus it, is an extinct type of rep, uh, reptile lizard so they were one of the first reptiles like to exist 
Yep. Yeah, so it's in the group agamids. That means like arboreal lizards. Good. What about the diplocolus? So, so it is one of the animals that they are inver- invertebrates. Uh, they can live on land and water, but they can also breathe on water with their skin. These are the, these are not a invertebrate. These are vertebrates. Sorry, can I got the word wrong? William the Anyway, uh, almost everything that you said up, uh, about the hyalinomus is right. The other guy, what about the other guy? Diplocolus. So they can breathe with their skin and they have a large range of vis- visual like they have a large visual range because of the shape of their head. Yeah. These are amphibians, diplocolus. Uh, and uh, so they can breathe with their skin, right? Yeah, more almost all the amphibian can breathe with their breathe from their skin. That's the amphibian uh, character that they developed in the evo- evolutionary history. So, yeah. so are these also born in like some larval stage, like how? Uh, Salamanders come from newts and frogs have come from tadpoles. Are these born in like a stage like that or are they just born like this? Yeah. No, no, they, they're born like a uh, life circle. They lay eggs, then the tadpole stage, then the uh, adult stage. So in mm. the adult stage, they can go on land, right, sir? Yeah, they can they, go on They land. can also hunt, no, sir? Yep. Um, but they can also eat uh, like uh, like leaves and stuff also? there are different species some of them are carnivores some of them are herbivores some of them are omnivores so in the uh, this era or the Devonian these uh, amphibians start to uh, thrive on the land then the Carboniferous era they diverse to the different groups uh, actually, in the Carboniferous era, no, uh, that's the age of amphibian that we call, uh, they uh, thrive as uh, modern mammals. Nowadays, you, you almost all the time, if you go for the forest, mainly if you go for the uh, yala, you, you will be able to see uh, mammals mainly almost every uh, big thing and the small thing that you get your eyes on those are mammals in the carboniferous era if you go for the jungle you will see almost every time is amphibian different type different shape uh, amphibian so they started in the devonian period so so the reason they were amphibians uh, was because that was the time they were coming from sea to land no sir yeah yeah in the devonian they see they start to uh, invade land from sea when the carboniferous which is the next era they thrive so uh, the arthropoleura uh, is a really large um, what do you call it? Uh, like it's it's there in the modern time because like back then, sir, the oxygen amount was high, no, sir, uh, and temperature was high, no, sir. So like they they grew humongous. Um, they 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 were one of the like biggest predators back then. The meganeura is also like uh, sir, because of the high oxygen levels, uh, they grew really big. Like they are the same, same dragonfly but bigger. Yeah. They it's also not, like uh, they were also omnivorous. No, it's not a uh, same, but yeah, these are bigger version of modern day millipedes and the dragonfly. Sir, uh, ma- a, sir. So it has a, a six foot long uh, wingspan, right? Yeah. And sir, apparently it is, uh, it's about 70 centimeters long, sir. Who? Arthropleura or the Meganeura? No. Meganeura, yeah, Meganeura. The the Meganeurians the, were the largest. We call them griffin flies, not the dragon flies, which is a certain uh, distinct character. Tell them apart from the dragon flies. So then, what exactly did they did the Meganeura prey on? Like what they, animals did it eat? They can they they 
as the study they prey upon anything that they can eat less than their size it doesn't mean it's amphibian reptile another insect yes sir so, so, and there was this article i'm i'm kind of thinking it's fake they are saying there was a giant praying mantis uh, like raptorial arm found uh, like fossilized yeah probably like there it's are... a really big one yeah well, but the according to uh, uh non science uh in the carboniferous era carboniferous uh, period uh that's the time uh largest uh, arthropods or the insect arrive in the uh, okay earth sir yeah. like um, uh, it's because of the high temperature and sir the high uh, yeah oxygen oxygen am- oxygen amount of sir yeah it's a high oxygen yes, level uh, scientists did a test on uh, cockroaches cockroach yes i put in them in like a chamber with double the oxygen and then they double in size sometime yeah. later yeah so uh, sir so they like back then sir they have 20 23% more oxygen no sir yep it's a uh, more oxygen than uh, current level so uh, this is uh, mainly uh, affect the insects or so the arthropods because uh, they extract their oxygen in different way like uh, we do or the vertebrate does so uh, it's like uh, they directly get oxygen from there not uh, uh, inhaling or exhaling they has uh, some pores in their body so uh, high oxygen level means they can grow l- larger in the arthropoda that's a uh, uh, related or the relative for uh, for modern millipedes uh, these sir, creatures sir, like, uh, a... they grew very big like like, uh, like 12 yeah. meters yeah was it like the smallest one sir uh, arthro arthropoda family yes no, sir arthropoda is the largest one there are some uh, small size which mean 6 uh, feet or something like that but less than that the they aren't any small thing uh, less than that in this family these are the large largest millipede in that time these uh, creatures considered as gentle giants on their era arthropoda not the meganivora it's a uh, vicious hunter then the the arthropoda like hunted when it needed to hunt right sir no actually it's a, not a hunter it's actually it's a debatable but most of the scientists think and believe it is a debris or the eat on like uh, scavenger scavenger yeah. so, stuff in the decomposition stuff same thing that does a uh, modern millipedes because uh, this guy is uh, basically a millipede which is a huge millipede so then what about the meganeura sir is it a scavenger no it's a carnivore a hunter sir it's a hunter sir, it was a and some like to drink uh, some uh, serpent uh, tree serpent stuff sir uh that's i can't recall something like that normally in the griffin flies as like a modern dragon fly because their re- uh, closest relatives are dragon flies so they behave as same as like them there are some key characters that differ them from the dragon fly that's why that's why we call them as a griffin flies otherwise that are rather than that they are uh, basically large dragon flies so almost every dragon flies lives in today uh, top carnivores so the griffin flies or so the meganeurians they behave same as them same goes with the arthropoda it's a basically large uh, millipede so almost every millipede living that today not the centipedes millipedes they are debriters or the scavengers they eat uh, decomposed matters uh, decaying things like that so the even though meganeura has a massive body it also behave something like uh, today that's the thing uh, modern science 
think about this animal, but it can be changed if they find more and more fossil evidence and trace fossils and something like that. Sir, and does, does the like size being bigger of these arthropods, sir, like the insects and like stuff, does it make their lifespan also longer? Yeah, it's probably because uh, they are so they are, they are so all always a, a good chance to live live alone as a being. Normally, even the current uh, day, if you have big bodies or the bigger animal, if you if you feel you, a big animal, you will live low. Let's go for the elephants, even the mammals, the humans. We we basically has a big body, so we can live long. If you if you use a small animal, you will die. It's a small time period. It's like a rat or mouse or something like that. And the other fact is there's a, a huge oxygen amount, so uh, they can uh, do stuff twice well as we do current days. So they have uh, some sort uh, big life forms comparing to a. Uh, today's insects or the arthropods. Okay. Hmm. Sir, but isn't there like, aren't there like insects that can live really long as well, like small ones? Like nowadays. Yeah. Normally, if you have a big uh, bodies, that uh, guarantee you have big life uh, lifespan. Normally, okay. almost every big, big animal if it's uh, not getting killed by in the midway, it will live longer lifespan than the other animals. But if you are, have small bodies, it's uh, you have less lifespan. Uh, same okay, thing. You... I, mean, I mean like queen ants and stuff like queen ants live like 30 years, but then like they're not really like the biggest animal. So it's like there are like Animals that are not that big, but they can live really long, right? Yeah, but but the but the insects uh, measurements, queen ants, uh, somewhat is the biggest insects in their. Well, technically, sir, like praying mantises and stuff are like much bigger, but they only live like uh, one and a half years. But queen ants live much longer. Yeah, but, but the problem is, in the praying mantis, they have uh, some. Uh, different condition than the queen ants. Normally, if, the, if you queen ants or the queen uh, of the uh, hymenop hymenopteran uh, colony, you have special uh, facilities to live. It's, it's like you're keeping animal in the, uh, with your, it's like you're keeping pet dog. Yeah. Your pet dog will live longer life than the other dogs or the stray dogs because you give them always special affection if he, if it's if he's uh, hungry you feed them fed them if if it uh, get sick you treat them so they they will live long than the stray dog the same sir, condition yeah so back then uh, there were like uh, like uh, bees uh, wasps and ants were like one thing no sir they were like uh, like huge like Ants back then, no sir. Yeah, there are some huge ants, huge bees. Almost every insect that uh, can find in the Carboniferous era, it's much larger than the current insects because of the oxygen level that we just discussed sir, about. But the... they took much more. Uh, sir, but they took a longer time to like uh, go from uh, like like egg to adult, right, sir? That I actually like can't least, recall because, uh, in because the, sir, like uh, even today, sir, like the smaller than the quicker it turns into adult. Yeah, yeah, sir, that's true. Like I have two ant farms, and one of them has black crazy ants, and the other one has wee ants. Then uh, mm. Asian wee ants. Then the black crazy ants constantly multiply like every day because they are much smaller. But the wee ants at least take like some more time. Because yeah. the event is bigger, the, but the, the black crazy ants. That's the same same uh, thing happened in the big animals and the small animal. In your yes, ant sir. colony, bigger guys live live long 
but get time to mature as an adult but the small guy uh, matured uh, quickly but died out uh, quicker than the big guy yes and uh, i have like uh, a few praying mantis as well and like uh, some of them have, like some of them are like quite old but they are just still alive so that's yeah. because like they are in the proper condition yeah it's it's, it's basically you are uh, keeping them as a proper condition or you know, the pet yeah if you if you release them into the wild they will die out something even uh, a bird attack or something like that so yeah. until those happen those not happening in your place they will uh, live a long life than compared to their wild cousins so anyway yes yeah, sir that's a, another topic so i think we can go for the sir, thank I you i can't hear properly sir again yes yeah, sir uh, same thing happened it just randomly the voice goes really low and then uh, it just uh, comes back uh sorry about that because uh, i think it's a uh, come with the uh, weather right? yeah so yes. i will try my best to uh, increase my volume because this, i'm already done that this is the best volume i can produce with my laptop anyway uh, in permian fauna the next time period there are two thing you can tell them yes sir uh, uh, the the sir, sir, the, 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 the right. sir okay you the, go first so the dimetrodon so lots of people think it's like a distant relative of the dinosaur because it looks like a spinosaurus but actually sir it's a distant relative of mammals sir uh, but the only thing is they lay eggs and uh, they have immense body heat so they have that uh, cell thing to cool their body down sir yeah so uh, the other one gorgonops length of 22 to 35 cm yeah these are the distance relative of uh, mammals gorgonops and dimetrodon uh, can everybody hear me yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir okay uh so these are the as uh, you guys told dimetrodon even the gorgonops there's these are distinct relative of the mammals not the uh, dinosaurs but the most of the people uh, still think these guys as a early dinosaurs or something like but but they are they aren't and uh, there's another two uh creatures i was able to put in here cynodont and eupocaria if you can uh, tell about yes sir uh so what cynodont what the you um cynodont uh sir cynodonts <laughs> are uh, um uh, cynodonts uh, uh, there is a species named after the animal cynodont sir yeah and uh, sir eupocaria is also uh, sir eupocaria is um uh, um and uh, is thought to be a dinosaur but it's not it came before the dinosaur sir yeah so anyway the cynodont is another sir, the, ther- sir, sir cynodont is also a mammal yeah it's um, a it's mammalian just, reptile it's like a dog sir. it just yeah. it just looks like a dog Uh, it has a really good sense of smell uh, can hunt they can also hunt small or small prey yeah. okay the cynodont another uh, mammalian reptile or the mammal looking reptile which is gave rise true mammals these are not true mammals but there are uh, some characters that they share with us or the mammals the eupocaria it's a relative to the archosaurs or the dinosaurs it's uh, this guy uh, actually this one is a uh, much more close to dinosaurs than this guys so 
uh, these are the sum of permian fauna there are some uh, fauna in permian nera uh, some uh, interesting things but i didn't put them all in this uh, this thing because it's uh, not a uh, i don't have time to do that to, uh we can do it in another day or something like that anyway uh just give me a second please sorry uh some to do some urgent stuff anyway uh the end of the permian area uh there was a largest known catastrophe happened in the earth history which is permian triassic extinction uh, everyone can hear me yes sir yes sir yes, yes sir, sir. Yeah, permian triassic extinction so almost uh, everything i can uh, it's a 95% of life uh, wiped out from the earth then the uh, mesozoic era or the middle life era sir, uh, sir is that when, that's when the, the dinosaurs and uh, aquatic yeah. mammals start to appear right sir yeah so this is the most famous uh, era of the earth history mesozoic most of the thing that uh, famous because of the jurassic park rather than that there are uh, three distinct period in mesozoic triassic jurassic and cretaceous this is the time dinosaurs appeared and thrived and they extinct or happened uh, so there is another two slides Uh, i put some of dinosaurs and uh, reptiles on these areas rather than i telling about them i will let you guys to tell for me about these uh, fauna of the mesozoic this is the first slide can anyone can tell these uh, creatures yes sir sir um uh the first one sir the um animal i i know this one sir but i'm not going to pronounce it because i find it hard uh sir it's the biggest uh it's the biggest flying animal that has ever lived and was uh, named after the quechua wind god and uh, secondly sir uh, the ichthyosaurus is uh, is again uh, Uh, a whole species was named after it the ichthyos and uh, there are a couple more sir but um, this one is quite famous yeah and and, uh, and the and the chronos uh, chronosaurus sir uh, is part of the species mosasaurus sir and uh, elasmosaurus are um, Elas monsters. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I can't remember the species, but um, the way they swim is in the same way. Uh, now they turtle swim, sir. Mm -hmm. Any opinion? Sir, and the Ichthyosaurus was believed to uh, was uh, had evolved into the bottle nose dolphin. I beg your pardon. Ichthyosaurus. Uh, so the Ichthyos Ichthyosaurus evolved into the bottle nose dolphin. Ah, and uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Uh, sir. Oh, tell. Uh, sir, the ichthyosaurs gave birth to their young in the water, sir. Um, uh. Anyone? Sir, the first complete ichthyosaur school was founded by Joseph Anny. Yeah. So anyway. Uh... Uh, most of the things that you are you 
told in here it's true but some of some things should be uh, changed the first thing most uh, of yes, the people people think when 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 we saw these animals most of the people they think these are as a dinosaurs which is not these are not dinosaurs these are not dinosaurs they are reptiles yeah. yeah these are reptiles which is belong to archosaurs also include dinosaur crocodiles and uh, several extinct genera the quetzalcoatlus or the quetzalcoatl named after aztec god serpent god or the wind god uh, was the largest flying animal vertebrate known to a theistic there are some uh, debates which is this guy or the hexagopteryx the largest one but i personally uh, go with the quetzalcoatlus yeah, yeah. there's one of my friends got locked out or something and uh, he said he's in the waiting room can you uh, please admit admit him ah uh, i thought there's a uh, host wait a minute oh uh, and sir i need this chronosaurus was a marine rep- oh just wait a moment i'm trying to uh, admit the uh are there uh someone not hosting okay. in this lecture sir you continue sir okay oh and sir i need to make a correction sir um chronosaur chronosaurus isn't a uh, uh, mosasaur sir it's a plesiosaur yeah it's a plesiosaur yeah and a... elasmosaurus is a plesiosaur plesiosaur yeah there's a these are the plesiosaurs and pleosaurs uh largest known pleosaur is a chronosaur it's not a mosasaur yes and the like these are marine reptile yeah those are marine reptiles then the elasmosaurus uh the biggest known plesiosaurs the ichthyosaur yes ichthyosaurus is the uh, well known uh, ichthyosaurid uh, creature but there are some uh, tons of different uh, creatures in this yeah. Um, yes yeah. the biggest ichthyosaur is the shonisaurus yeah shonisaurus or oh, there are some debates in the shastasaurus as well but i personally go with the shonisaurus which is uh, approximately uh, quite uh, similar size uh, maybe uh, several uh, feet or something uh, shorter than blue whale so but not the not as the largest as the blue whale anyway uh someone said the ichthyosaurs evolved into the bottlenose dolphin it's not a true fact because uh, ichthyosaurus and the bottlenose dolphin quite looking similar we call this is uh uh convergent evolution so uh, if the different kind animals live in the same type natures they will adapt or the evolve same uh, body characters which is that that's the convergent evolution ichthyosaurus is a lizard extinct lizard lived in the ocean so it's develop uh, dolphin like characters dolphin is a mammal which is live again notion so it uh develop uh, ichthyosaurus like characters that's why they are similar looking but those are two separate animals or the orders or the families anything so ichthyosaurus didn't gave rise for the bottlenose dolphin so but uh, in most documentaries they just say that it evolved into one no nope. i don't know whether where you find that documentary it's uh, it's it's not a true because ichthyosaurus didn't gave rise it's it's like uh, you are telling a uh, velociraptor dinonychus gave rise for humans is it true no it's not so the same uh, theory goes apply for the ichthyosaur it's a it's a marine reptile it's 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 live in the ocean same uh, nature 
or the same uh, uh, area, same similar places like uh, modern day dolphin live, they acted uh, similar way to the modern day dolphin. So they develop their dolphin like characters. If you see their tail, it's much similar to the fish. It's a vertical. Yes, the dolphin tail is horizontal. Horizontal, yes. So those are the some of uh, uh, non-dinosaur fauna, but famous, but not dinosaurs fauna in uh, can be found in uh, Mesozoic. Then I go for the dinosaurs. You can tell. So I have a question, sir. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Are the are the are all pterosaurs dinosaurs? Uh, actually, it's uh, I can't uh, clearly hear you. Are all? Can you repeat your question? Uh, uh, that everyone can hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, are all pterosaurs um, like uh, dinosaurs? Or are they uh, flying reptiles? No, those are reptiles. These are not dinosaurs. Dinosaur is a, another different category. Uh, okay. These are reptiles. But, but they belong to archosaurs or the ruling lizard family. And all archos uh, dinosaurs go under archosaurs. Yeah, all dinosaurs, all uh, these uh, reptiles and the crocodiles go under the archosaurs. But uh, all the archosaurs, not dinosaurs, but all dinosaurs are archosaurs. So these are not dinosaurs. These okay. are reptiles, flying reptiles, marine reptiles, but not a dinosaur. In next slide, I will show uh, some of dinosaurs. There are tons of dinosaurs uh, found uh, to the known to the paleontology or the science up to date, but I don't uh, put all of them, which is cannot be done. But I put some of them. So I didn't put name either. So you can uh, tell what are these. So, uh, the parasaur, uh, the ankylosaurus, the pachysaurus, the giganotosaur. Sir, excuse me. Sir, tell. Sir, the the velociraptor. Sir, velociraptor. If you if you can tell one by one, it's it would be better. Uh, the one in the top left corner, sir, is an orthopod. Uh, and uh, the one, um, I'm not, I think it's the Phaslosaurus, sir. Hmm. And the one in the bottom left corner is the Triceratops, sir. Hmm. And uh, the one in the middle there with that big domed head, sir. Hmm. Uh, that's the I'm not I can't pronounce this, but it's a headbutting type of dinosaur. Yeah. And the one in the right bottom corner, sir, is the Stegosaurus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one, the big one with the long tail and head, sir, is a sauropod. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm not uh, sure of which type it is, sir. And uh, the one and the one in the top right corner is the ankylosaur, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one at the uh, side there is the Velociraptor or city party. I'm not sure. Any Excuse me, sir. Is that a thing? Dinosaur is the Pachycephalosaurus. I beg your pardon. The one with the big head is a Pachycephalosaurus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, small one sorry, is sir, I can't one. really pronounce that. No, that's okay. And the so, and the long neck one, I'm pretty sure it's a Diplodocus. Yeah. So anyway, first thing, if you unable to uh, pronounce those names, it's it doesn't matter because this is not a 
uh, usual language that you using or uh, it's not a english not a, a sinhala or anything it's a latin or greek or inuit or any anything that dead language because normally in science we use uh, latin and greek to uh, naming for the creatures in scientifically so it's very hard to pronounce these uh, names but eventually when you are uh, studying further and further doing more and more you will be able to pronounce those names so uh, don't worry about that and the, almost everything that you say about these dinosaurs is right because i put a uh, um, well known creatures of each uh, representative uh, categories yes this one or the top left corner one is a paraceratops paraceratops and the left bottom one is a triceratops the middle one uh, with t-rex, uh, T-rex. then the uh, right hand corner bottom one is the stegosaurus right hand corner uh, not in the corner but the right hand top that's a ankylosaurus then the middle head butting guy is a pachycephalosaurus yes this is a diplodocus the long neck sauropod but it's it's okay if you unable to tell uh, this is diplodocus argentinosaurus or anything else because almost every sauropod uh, sharing same uh, similar body pattern and the small one chicken like one is a velociraptor because i put the velociraptor in this place this is the accurate velociraptor the velociraptor that you in see in the movies are modified sir yeah it's, it's actually not a modified it's, it's inaccurate because if you put this guy in the movie nobody it doesn't, it doesn't look, look scary it yeah. doesn't look fierce yeah nobody uh, going to watch movie anymore this is a chicken size uh, thing it's a two but sir, it was one of the top predators sir. yeah it's a pack hunter but it's, a, it's not the largest one largest one of the raptors is a utah raptor but it's a less a utah one. raptor sir yeah but sir a pack of velociraptors can take down a sauropod sir Six. they were that powerful but they they doesn't normally go for the sauropods they 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 will go for the large animal but they normally don't go for Sir? the sauropods it's, it's, it's not is the not smallest the... raptor a micro raptor ah uh, actually not the micro raptor is a smaller raptor. raptor there are smaller raptors than that even the bambi raptor is smaller than the micro raptor the, the okay. velociraptor lived in a desert like environment yeah mon- mainly they found in the mongolian deserts so anyway there are well famous uh, dinosaurs and the, there are some uh, dinosaurs that uh, inaccurately uh, uh, shown in the movies mainly if you see the uh, guy with the frill who is that in the jurassic park movie 1993 Uh, i'm sorry sir there is a dinosaur that show in the 1993 first jurassic park movie dilophosaurus yeah dilophosaurus yeah that's uh, not the accurate one that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, it's bigger no sir yeah it's a 17 feet or the 17 foot but the movie it's a 2 feet or something like that puny thing and it has a venom uh that dinosaur doesn't have any venom but there are some dinosaurs that uh, had venom there is a raptor uh cynonithosaurus it has a venom if you uh, going to watch a planet dinosaur you can see there is a pack of cynonithosaurus they are hunting uh, some monitopods with their venoms so they hunt like quite similar to gila monster that modern day venom uh, lizards so anyway so these like are like komodo dragons or gila monster no no it's a gila monster so gila monster or the gila monster okay uh, that's the same method that's the same way 
uh, that raptor has venom. Komodo dragon actually has venomous saliva. So uh, it can't be a, it's a, a mix of bacteria. But this guy has venom as for the studies. So like anyway, a snake. Uh, yeah, like a snake, but uh, not the same way that the snake attack. It's quite similar for the Gila monster. Or the bearded lizard. Okay, sir. So, uh, actually, uh, there are several uh, another or the more animals, more creatures in uh, this area, which is well famous. Uh, most of the pre, uh, prehistoric animals, if you tell prehistoric fauna, most of the time, uh, these things that spark in your head not the Permian or the insects or anything like that. Almost everyone uh, start to think about the dinosaurs because these are the famous uh, creatures that uh, arrived and extinct in our planet history. So if you're going to do study uh, about the prehistory, there's a chance that you you will you might be able to find uh, dinosaurs in our country, which is yet to be happen. Even India had uh, some uh, dinosaurs for their collection. Really? Yeah. yeah, in China, there's a tons of dinosaurs for their collection, but uh, still. So they have unbroken dinosaur eggs. Who? China or India? China, sir. Uh, sir, those eggs are from Mongolia, sir. Yeah. Uh, from there, the Gobi Desert. Gobi yeah. Desert. Um, there are eggs uh, in uh, several countries, dinosaur eggs. But I'm going to tell, in Sri Lanka, in the paleontology, it's still in the uh, basic uh, levels. Almost a uh, handful of people doing this thing. And uh, it's yet to be fine dinosaur. As a matter of fact, we have uh, Jurassic uh, era fossils, which is ferns. Fern is a type of plant. And uh, one of the uh, rare thing that uh, uh, fossilize, plant material, soft bodies, animals are the rarest or the not easy things to be fossilized, but yet, we will be able to, we, we were able to find uh, fossils of the ferns, Jurassic ferns in Sri Lanka, but unfortunately, still we are unable to find uh, anything related to dinosaurs. Most uh, because of the thing that we are not doing uh, proper excavation and people that putting their time to uh, paleontology is less than in this country. So it's up to you to do that in near future. Then the uh, next uh, era, Cenozoic, which is the tertiary or quaternary, Paleogene, Neogene or quaternary or something like that. Uh, the current era or the age of mammals, which is we are also including, we are still living, uh, 66 million years ago to present. So they, this era also have some uh, well-known fauna. There's a two of them. Cenozoic fauna, it's a mammoths and Celodonta. Anyone can uh, describe these animals? Yes, sir. No. So be my guest. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, sir, um, mammoths, sir, are also called. Sir, is the noise disturbing you, sir? Uh, yeah, it was. It's not now. So, you can continue. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, mammoths, uh, they are called mammoths in English, sir. And um, uh, they were. They looked a lot like um, uh, uh, elephants, but they are they had big curved tusks uh, and they had hairy bodies. Yeah, the other one. 
uh so um other one i'm not i don't really know anything about yeah so anyone else so uh, these are the well known creatures from ice age uh mammoths and the sea mammoths tell x so the mammoths were around 30 13 feet tall then weighed around 6 tons uh uh-huh. what about the other one okay anyway This is the Celadonta, one of the well-known as a woolly rhinoceros. The uh, as it is described, it's a woolly rhinoceros. These guys uh, representing the Ice Age of Earth history, known Ice Age because there are several Ice Age uh, happened to have in Earth history. This is the latest one and the well-known one. So this happened in the Cenozoic era, as you. told about the mammoth yeah according to the scientific uh, or the studies all the thing that you told about the mammoth is right and there are several uh, species of mammoth uh, described woolly mammoth date. is the biggest sir yeah to up to date then uh, there are another two animals toxton and megatherium can anyone tell anything about these guys so megatherium is like a bear so mm. it, uh, it 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 eats bugs and stuff sir who talks don't know megatherium megatherium sir yeah, anyone know about the relate relate do the descendant of this guy or the closest uh, I'm not sure. So Anti-rat, anti-rat, anti-rat. Toxodon is bo- wild boars. No, not the toxodon. I'm asking about the mega deer. Yeah. So anteaters, anteaters, anteaters. Actually, mega deer, more the great beast. Uh, early, uh, yeah, early ancestor of the sloth. which is very quite funny these guys are huge sized uh, approximately uh, 10 to 13 or something like feet and the nowadays sloth is 1 feet or something like that less than 1 feet to 1 to 1 and 1/2 feet so these are the uh, large cousins of the extinct cousin of the sloth megatherium which is well famous yeah Yeah, but even the megatherium eats like ants and stuff, right? Because of the tongue, it has. Yeah, Or the berries. Yeah, uh, yeah they uh, predict this guy also eat ant and something like that. The problem is, this is a huge animal, and it has pot belly, so. Uh, it won't had enough food from just ants. Yeah. is more oh, yeah. mainly this is so a, it this... would have hunted no uh, it's, so, uh... it's a it's still debatable if is this guys hunted or not but uh, mainly these are herbivores and yes they occasionally eat carrion or something like that but the maintain their huge bodies they normally go for the herbs or the plant material and still uh, it's debatable if they actively hunted the uh, prey because of the even though they is big they still stop sloth it's very slow That's animal slow. yeah so but the huge size uh, they can use it their huge size to uh, chase away uh, scare predators predators. Steal, uh, predators and steal their carrions but uh, still it's debatable so these are the megafauna extinct megafauna of the cenozoic era and this is a well famous one i think the saber tooth tiger yeah the smilodon so tell me about them anyone be my guest 
can tell the anything you know about this uh, like uh, like um, like a distinct relative of the ca- like the uh, like the feline family um mm. they have producing uh, like canine teeth mm. um they also used to live in uh, like so they, they they usually live in cold conditions because they have a thick uh, a thick coating of fur uh, mm-hmm. anyone else and so they have uh, they are quite close to the leopard mm. okay anyone any other so yeah these are uh, relatives for the felids so the cat family but not the true cats these are saber tooth cats which is, a, which is another different category yes uh, the largest one is a saber tooth cat those mylodon uh, there are some several other species and uh, some of them uh, live in the cold condition and the ice age and some of them uh, countered with us early humans in the saber tooth just cat. like the mammoth sir uh... yeah these fauna or the cenozoic fauna late of them most of them mammoth or the woolly rhinoceros or the megatherium or the saber tooth uh, they uh, countered with early humans because we know about them because we can find the cave paintings that human uh, painted these animal in the cave so we know that they see observe kill or killed by this guy in some point of their life so uh, and the one of the big theory uh, one of the uh, theory of the extinction of these animal which is kill it's over killed by humans in uh, cenozoic fauna or the mega fauna mega uh, mammals they were extinct there are a handful of big animals or the big mammals uh, still able to live today or the world into today there are tons of uh, big mammals in cenozoic fauna but they uh, extinct in some of point and that extinction happen in uh, drastically quickly way so uh, scientists still uh, making theories there are three theories the so chill ill and kill chill mean there is a huge uh, cold condition so they they was ab- uh, wasn't able to cooperate with the cold condition so they died out then the ill came ill mean uh, there are some diseases came and they died out then the kill early human over kill those animals and they died out some of animals actually died out the cold the cold condition some of them uh, over killed by uh, human and some of them died by the a sudden illness or the disease so uh, is anyone uh, i think someone going to yes go? sir me um sir didn't it uh, didn't some, some of them uh, go extinct because of the the cha- climate change because it got to be warmer yeah yeah uh, that's that's mainly go for the uh, animals that adapted to cold cold ca- conditions mainly for the mammoths okay. and the seal or the woolly rhinoceros the, but the problem is there are some mammoth species that actually adapt to the live in the warmer condition there are mammoths mammoth species that have uh, small hair so they can uh, live or the cope with the warmer condition but they also died out for for them it was a kill or the over killed by the early human so uh, this is the main uh, three theories that uh, scientists used to describe the extinction of the megafauna so uh, we can uh, this is the resurrection of the mammoth or the museum resurrection uh, this one is uh, resurrecting a mammoth into the museum and these are some fossils so i am not uh, going to talk about uh, 
for sales evolution and extinction in this uh, session because that should be another uh, lecture but i am going to talk sri lankan uh, prehistory these are the some excavations that we have from the sri lankan prehistoric fauna uh, again uh, everyone can hear me Yes, sir. Okay, yes, good. Uh, Sri Lankan prehistory. These are some uh, excavation sites. Most of these sites are uh, caves. So most of these sites contains human uh, uh, body parts or the skeletons and the uh, stuff that they use to eat. Anyway, sir, uh, sir, yeah. Um, uh, like, are there any like? Um, like animal species like are there so like dinosaurs that used to live in like sri lanka it should be but the problem is there might have today, been we can't find yeah we, up until today no one able to find anything uh in uh, dinosaurs as i said before most of our scientists focus their uh or the paleontologists focus their subject into the uh cenozoic fauna we call it kuruvita satta parampara so mainly we get uh, ancient elephants ancient hippos ancient rhino so on so far uh, lay oldest fossil that we able to excavate in our earth it was a fern it's a jurassic fern so if if you have if you able to put your effort and time to those beds i'm 100% sure that we will be able to find dinosaurs in this country but uh, unfortunately no one uh, still uh, goes to find anything It's, as a young scientist as a young paleontologist it's up to your uh, responsibility to excavate this thing and make history anyway these are the some of animals in here in sri lanka about 100 different faunal species were identified 100 different animals most of them are uh, mammals and some uh, sharks fish and snails uh, so uh, these are some of them these are uh hippopotamus or the sri lankan hippo hexaprotodon singhalus and these are uh, some of elephant ancient elephants hypsilapus saitsuvicus those uh, was a uh, unearth from our country then there are the two rhinoceros which is also lived in here and uh, most famous there are uh, tiger and uh, lion also lived in this country so uh, those are the animals that we was able to find in sri lanka uh, but yes if you able to uh, put your effort into this subject some day in near future you you might be able to get dinosaurs in this country so this is the end of uh, today like